We can be really focused on high-performing organizations and productivity only if we keep track of and pay attention to the mental health and well-being of the workforce. I was just recently talking to a, the CHRO of Bank of America, um, Sherry Bronstein. They have people graduating, in, interviewing for positions at Bank of America, who in their interviews ask about the mental health benefits. And could you imagine that 10 years ago, 25 years ago? Never. You wouldn't even talk about it if you were a senior employee, right? So the, the landscape has really changed and this new generation is pushing for change in the workplace around mental health. When we think about mental health at work, it's really important to build a strategy, a mental health strategy. And based on our data, only one in four companies has a mental health strategy. Anyone can be a leader when it comes to mental health at work. And that's really important because no matter where you are in the organization, you can have a leading role and, and, and help or your organization advance what they're doing around mental health in the workplace. When a senior executive shares something about their own mental health and well-being, whether it is a mental health condition that they, they themselves have had to deal with or someone, a loved one has dealt with, we see the immediate impact as it runs through an organization in destigmatizing the conversation around mental health. Every single one have to contribute to the success, meaning contribute to the safety or survival of the crew. Otherwise, uh, we all die. We have to uh, make sure that uh, we, our the vector, the vector line up to the the goal. All four of us facing the same goal. That's the first thing. Each of one of us has our own ego, for sure. And but uh, uh, as long as uh, you know, uh, all members are facing to the toward the same goal. Eventually, the uh, the team started to move. The, the starting to gear up and move, and uh, each small ego uh, slowly uh, diminishes. And uh, again, that's the help of communication. And, and uh, as a team become really crystallized. The limited uh, environment, you cannot have a 100% solution. Everything has to be compromised. So uh, it's a matter of uh, uh, the compromise. So what you can lose, and what you cannot. So we have to draw the line. You can compromise to, to the extent that the, the main goal, in this case, is survival, survival of the full crew. Uh, so you have to get rid of other uh, minor issue. Don't worry about, you know, like comfort. Don't worry about the extra success or don't worry about the pristine condition. But the most important thing is the survival. 
although we train a lot of different uh, uh, situations, sometimes uh, you come up with uh, unknown territory, which means the, it, even the long period of training, you cannot cover every single situation. So uh, sometimes we have to decide what to do among, we're discussing among ourselves and decide what to do. And the important thing is uh, we play as a team, teamwork again. So the lead, we have a leader and we have a follower and each of us has its own expertise. Number one, we should motivate people in every country to demand an end to government subsidies for fossil fuels. The climate crisis, of course, is a fossil fuel crisis. That's what it is in its essence. And yet, uh, governments around the world are subsidizing the burning of fossil fuels at a rate 42 times larger than the subsidies for renewable energy that's pollution free. We also need a carbon tax or a carbon fee and we've known that for a long time and some have given up on the possibility of that idea because it is admittedly quite difficult. But there are some new approaches such as the carbon border adjustment mechanism which is attractive to many people including in my own country, the US, that have never been friendly to the idea of a carbon tax in the past. We also have to uh, address the access to capital uh, available to developing countries because there is a so-called home bias, uh, which means that 90% of uh, the capital raised in a country goes to projects in that country. And what that means, uh, among other things, is that many developing countries, which desperately need this help, don't have access to the private capital that's necessary in order to build out solar farms and wind farms and battery factories and all of the other technologies that are now available uh, and quite cost effective, cheaper than fossil fuels in almost everywhere, in almost all parts of the world, and pollution free. It's the first time in 30 years that they've even been able to name the problem. But now that we have named it, people around the world need to hold these leaders to account. And the leaders themselves should get out ahead of this process and take bold steps to reduce the dependence on carbon-based fuels, oil, gas, and coal, uh, and move forward quickly with the substitutes, solar, wind, electric vehicles, batteries, uh, green technologies of all sorts, regenerative agriculture, sustainable forestry. We can solve this crisis. We need the political will to do so, but it's worth remembering that political will is itself a renewable resource. Sitting in complete darkness, we're feeling 30 atmospheres of pressure. If you cast your mind back, 1969, Apollo 11 streamed live the lunar landing at nearly 400,000 kilometers from Earth. Now fast forward 54 years later, and here we are coming to you from about half a kilometer below the surface of the ocean. And, and really, this is one of, the, one of the few manned live broadcasts from the deep sea to ever take place. Deep Sea and the 
hundreds of thousands of species that live here or that are potentially going to help us solve some of the greatest challenges to face humanity in the future. deep ocean is very slow, stable. Animals live for extremely great ages. Just earlier today, actually right now, I'm looking at a beautiful Leopathy's black coral. We know they can live for over 4,000 years. We know that there are sponges in the deep ocean that live for over 10,000 years. And animals that take that long to, or can live for that long and take that long to reproduce, do not recover from impact well or easily. they could have some really interesting compounds within their body that we could ultimately benefit from for pharmaceuticals, for nutraceuticals. Hey, we could be getting new antibiotics from the deep sea in the future. Then there's biomimetics. That's innovation taking inspiration from deep sea animals. There are currently new textiles that are being developed from hag taking inspiration from hagfish slime.